Okay, so here's how we are going to finally going to talk about freely jointed chain, chain and uh, finally talk about the molecular weight on polymer size. And here we are going to focus on polymer size being end-to-end -end distance root mean square, which is essentially square root to the when you do the average of end-to-end -end distance. And then this is a naively just say that this uh, H RMS is going to proportional to actually molecular weight to the square. This is our sort of the goal for this uh, session. So what is called the size. So when you double up the size, your size of polymer cell coil only increased by 40% and because of this co uh, correlation. And this one is, uh, is uh, going to be explained to you, uh, this scaling argument using this, what is called the uh, freely jointed chain. And this is uh, what is called the uh, uh, universal joint model. So each one is being represented by these vectors. And whenever they are making this, the uh, uh, vectors are taking its position, they can essentially, they are free to choose go anywhere. So here's a sort of the demo. But you know, among those choices, they are taking that. So they can they can go any take any positions. So the when you make the first and the second, so this is the first and this is an L two second vector. There is no correlation in between these two, and that's the beauty of this. No correlation between any vectors uh, because they don't really remember what was a, what has been before. There is no. Uh, no memories on, on this. And there's a lot of similarity between this freely jointed chain and something what is called a random walk of Brownian motion, which I'm going to talk about later. So let's let's specifically focus about these pictures here. And as you can see, and this one is an end-to-end -end distance, right? End to end distance. Vectors. And that will be a good way to keep track of the size, right? The higher the number, so this is a, n is a number of bonds. And I guess remember that n is about two times the degree of polymerization for PE and other polymers, like polystyrene and other polymers. Sometimes it's not that easy, but many, many cases, many vinyl polymers had this simple relationship. So we can, we can, we know how many number of bonds, carbon-carbon bonds are there. And this is a distance of the L, which is a size of the nail that we'll call L. And that's uh, about 1.4 angstrom. So, you know, we can, we know the size of the bond bonds and based on the molecular weight, right? M over M naught, we can calculate DP. So I know how many bonds are there, what's the size of the bond, and we are in business to kind of know the, to correlate that with the uh, size of the polymer chain. And just let me just give the constraint that this is a freely jointed chain. And then what's going to happen uh, in here is, okay, I, I want to know, so, and as you can first try, if you do that, I want to know the average size of this end-to-end -end distance. And this one is a vector, and we can go uh, positive and negative quantities. And because of its own definition, there's a random walk, it is a zero. There's no, uh, this, the meaning of this bracket that I show here, okay, that means an average. And then, but is a, I have, so I cannot use the average of the end-to-end -end distance vector. So the way that to get around this, because I'm only interested in actually the magnitude of end-to-end -end vector distance. So it's actually, you can do the vector, vector scalar product. We call this uh, H square. And that will be a, a measure of the size. But, you know, unfortunately, this is a unit is size square. So that's why people call HRMS, root mean square, which is a square root to the size square. The so average to the H square, and you just do the square root. Sometimes the people write it this way. 
and that means the same thing. So now it has a, a unit of length. Right? So that's what I guess what we have to we have to do. So mathematically, h is being defined here, and let me write it one more time. Uh, h is essentially l1, l2, l3 until ln, right? So if you if you do that, that will be the one. So that's that's how simple, as you can see in this picture shown up here, uh, you can define that h. And then what I need to do is, okay, I what I to measure the size, I need to do the h square and do the averages. And so that means I have to do h first to the n bonds and then and let me just say maybe I can call it J J to this so this will be is a, there's a lot of cross rules uh, between the first vectors and the next vectors and then this one can be divided into okay this is an L1 times L1 L2 times L2 so there's a there's a this term right and then there is a term that is L1 L2 L1 L3 L1 L4 and what will be the average values and for this and then this one essentially continues to go on uh, for anything that is not the same. So in, in a sense that people write this one in a way, okay, the rule will be the one that uh, Li, Li, essentially self product, you do the summation of from first vector to the n vector. And the second one is L I L J and you do the summation for I and J are not the same and and you go and this I starts changes from the one to n and J start to one to n. As long as they are not the same, uh, we are going to be like that. And this, this can be all lump sum into this term. And we call this, there is no correlation between this first bond and the second bond. Naturally, what that means is first vector and second vector, the, the scale of product averages, there's no correlation, is zero. And it's, it's same for everything else. So each individual term, this is going to be zero. And uh, that's the beauty of this. Because what we saw, the end-to-end -end distance vector square ended up being like this, without this term here. So we finally got the equation that call h square is, and you know what's this, this size? That will be same as uh, l square. And how many are there? n. So n times l square. That will be the equation, yeah. and yeah, the one that I mentioned before, because there's no correlation, it's not there. So that's an equation that we have, we have find out. So finally then, what that means is the uh, RMS is essential square root to the N to the L. It makes sense, this is a length, that's a length, and here, 1.54 angstroms, and then that's the number of the bonds. Right. So, uh, but you know, we are not used to call it the size of the polymer chain number of bonds, but you, you, we just want to call it as molecular weight. Right. As you remember, molecular weight, if you divide by M naught, that will be dp, and then 
the n is dp some I'm going to use this term is n is proportional to dp right specifically for polyethylene that's twice the dp but typically that's just a linearly proportional so what that means is number of bonds proportional to linearly proportional to degree of polymerization this linearly proportional to the molecular weight and then this is a <coughs> root mean square this is a what is called a quote unquote size of the polymer chain so whatever you call it size there is a description of the polymer chain we call size and and as you as you remember the <coughs> so the <coughs> the their h is rms essentially what's the message from the top here is proportional to the square root to the n and this is square root to the m and then the end-to-end -end distance and the radius of gyration are linearly proportional to each other because when you talk about this is polymer this is an end-to-end -end distance And then, then if you want to draw the, okay, that's the central mass. So this is a radius of gyration, and and that's uh, <laughs> these two quantities essentially pretty much is not the same, but they have uh, they have, uh, there's a simple correlation, and then uh, and people has calculated assuming that uh, sufficient large chain. There is a simple correlation between these two, which is I'm going to talk about in the next next round. So, as you remember, I, I use this equation 0.3 square root to the m, and this is actually comes from this correlation, radius of gyration, and the molecular weight has a square root uh, to the relationship. So we take that's called the scaling law. Size has the scaling law about half, one half. Okay. Okay. Thank you.